inside of another edition of the SVG Sports Tech On Demand blog. I have the pleasure now to speak with VP of the Media Workflow Group of Diversified, Liz Davis. Liz, how are you doing? How's the rest of the Diversified team? Hope you're staying safe and where are you located right now? Thanks so much, Christian. Really appreciate it. So I am based out of New York City. I know you're based out of New Jersey, so you're feeling the pain of, uh, <laughs> of staying indoors. Um, you know, so I can say physically doing well, mentally a little kooky, which I'm sure everyone's feeling the same. Uh, Diversify is doing really well. Um, uh, as an organization, early on, we took a lot of uh, preventative measures. Um, as you know, as an integrator, 80% of our workforce is really on the front lines, um, on, on location doing deployments. And so uh, as a company, we took a lot of stringent precautions early on, and I can say we're doing very well as a company. Thank you. Good, good to hear, okay. For those who may not know who Diversified is, I'm not sure who doesn't by now, because you guys are a huge player with system integration and, and all that. Could you give us a little bit about what Diversified offers the you know, sports video production community? Yeah, so Diversified in itself is a systems integrator focused on media. Um, and we do have a lot of specialties that we focus on. Uh, one of the main one is sports and live events. Um, and so we have a team that is dedicated to everything that encompasses that. So control room, audio, stadium and arena, um, and really experiential as we're seeing a lot of these venues evolve from just being maybe sports venues to being multi-purpose venues. Um, and so that is one large portion of Diversified's uh, specialties. Um, but we also have a large ADE division uh, that focuses on uh, conference room, LED, IPV, uh, IPTV, and VOD. Uh, we also have a medical group, um, a federal group, education, and then my specialty is in media workflow. Um, but Diversified in itself is a media integrator that focuses on all technology regarding media. So I like to say the life cycle of the file, which means if you have a way that you need to uh, create content, view it, ingest it, uh, circulate it, get it out to the masses, um, that's going to be diversified. Okay, great. So uh, sticking to the sports and, the, and you know, the greater media workflows, obviously right now we're all stuck at home. We're all kind of coping with living at home, working at home. And before this, we were kind of migrating to more IP and remote workflows. But now this is only accelerating it. What are you seeing on your side of the business in terms of cloud technologies? And ultimately, what do you think will kind of lead us in the future? So it's interesting because I, you know, attending SVG, um, the regular events that happen annually or, or, you know, throughout the year, cloud and IP architecture has really been kind of on the forefront, right? And all of the, and all of the uh, events that we've been going to, everyone's been discussing this idea of a hybrid cloud architecture. But there's been a couple of setbacks, or, or I would say um, pre prevention in going that way. And, and egress pays a big part of that. Right. So uh, what does it truly mean to have a hybrid cloud architecture? You know, once that file gets up there, uh, how much can we put into the cloud so that it, the life cycle of that file can live in the cloud as long as possible and maybe even be distributed through a cloud architecture so that we're not coming up and down and experiencing those egress fees. So egress is really a limiter um, in a lot of in a lot of ways. Um, but I think the other thing is just pure IP infrastructure, right? So you've got to have this bandwidth to do that. And when you're talking about 100, 100 gig pipes, uh, what that goes into from a router matrix, from, from just the, the actual hardline infrastructure can be very costly. So I think although we've been talking about it and everyone knew that we were going to move there as an industry, it's sort of... Uh, I think people were, were dipping their toe in it or waiting as long as possible. Maybe you're putting your disaster recovery in the cloud, but everything else, you know, from a functional perspective is staying on-prem. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of look at COVID like what happened with the tsunami in 2010, really, which is it forced this digital revolution. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, everyone, the red one had just came out. But people were still very tentative uh, to shoot and, and on digital, and we were still seeing very much a film-based workflow. And all of our tape uh, and film uh, stock went away and it forced the digital revolution. I kind of think that's what's happening with COVID, right? Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden people are dispersed. We're looking for ways to have multi-site collaboration, remote editorial, um, and to have just a, as efficient um, of a uh, production and post-production process remotely as we did when we were all in one facility. So I think it's really pushed 
um, the not only the manufacturers, but also the end users to start to really look at cloud more, uh, more seriously. So I can say from our perspective, there's a couple of different things. The first thing that we're telling a lot of our customers is, uh, yes, remote editorial, there's a couple of platforms out there that are readily available, Bebop being one of them. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, though, if you're just using cloud remote editorial and you're not baking that, you know, there's not a tie in to your asset management platform, then you're going to run into the same issue you did before you have the asset management platform, which is where does my content live? I've created multiple variations of an asset versus just tracking that asset with an asset manager. Um, so I'm eating up more cloud space, storage space than I really need to. Sure. Um, I'm also not tracking my assets properly, so I don't know where they live. And so the first thing that we need to do is to really make sure that one, there's a storage architecture in place. You have a centralization of your content. But the second thing is, is really looking at asset management platforms that are truly microservices based. I mean, that is the future. It's always been the, it's always been the future and we were all progressing that way, but that is, that is now. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's critical that we're now uh, moving into a micro microservices based asset management platforms that are going to allow for a truly cloud based architecture. Um, and so I think the conversation that we're having with clients right now is, okay, what is your, what is your on, usually on premise architecture look like your workflow look like mm -hmm. what part of that can we start to transition now um and how can we get you fully mobile uh in the next six months um because i think the the flip side of this is we're also going to see that the expense of having people on site i think is going to be something corporations specifically sports teams um, are going to look to remove that overhead is going to, they're going to look to have that go away. And so I think the mobility is, is not just a, a current, um, conversation. I think it's, it's sparking the conversation that's going to continue. Okay. So remaining agile, nimble, and, you know, adapting to new ways of workflows is kind of going to probably be the answer when we get out of this, but, uh, Liz, I really appreciate your time. Please remain safe. Uh, Give the, the, the best wishes to the rest of the Diversified team. And uh, we'll see you at another event soon, whenever that happens, all right? Thank you so much, Christian. You too. Thanks, of guys. Course. Thank you. So for more of these episodes or the SVG Sports Tech On Demand blog, please head over to our website as well as the SVG YouTube channel.